Heath, okay, I'm doing a car. Right. How do I establish, you know, the diameter, the width, the offset, so forth and so on? Absolutely. Well, that's, uh, I guess that's partly what we do to, to help the customer. And in your case, let's take this sample wheel as an example. So this is a, this is a pretty big wheel. It's a 21 inch wheel. And a, more, a common misconception is actually this width across here. Like the, the total width of the wheel is actually measured from the inside of the bead. So if we hold up the ruler, it's actually an 11 inch wheel across the across the bead and the overall width is typically around 12 inches so people talk about offset and they're not sure what that really means. The best way to measure offset and it might be that your car already has some wheels and you want to check well what what's the offset of the wheels that I've got and we can use that as a starting point to build a custom wheel. So let's take a look at measuring the offset. The easiest way, let's just look at the total overall height of the wheel and that's 302 millimetres. We halve that to find the, the, the centre so that's 151. And then it's really just the distance from the back face of the wheel to the mounting face on the hub of the car. So with that straight edge and the ruler drop down, we pull that up and we're showing 57. So that's actually 157 less 152 is positive 5. So it's almost a, it's almost a neutral offset in that the, the mounting face of the wheel is pretty much dead centre, 5 mil in it. To the centre of the wheel. So, would I have to alter my uh, my geometry, my my toe in or my toe out or my camber because of that? Well, it depends on how tight we want the fitment to be on your car and, and also what it's being used for. If you've got a, a cruiser and you want to drive up and down the east coast like Peter with the HQ, well, you probably not want to probably not going to want to go really aggressive on camber and cause uneven tyre wear. But the best way for us to assess the wheel fitment for your car is to actually look at the, the wheel well and look at the packaging constraints. So we'll do that next. We'll take the wheel off Peter's car and uh, and look at how we actually take the measurements using 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 the form that's available. Well, I was going to say, you've got this form that people can actually fill in and that'll help them get a better idea on how to do it. Exactly, and it's, it's a little diagram, so the measurements are relatively easy to take and let's, uh, let's have a look at that now. Great. So Heath, give us a bit of an idea about choosing the right wheel offset, so forth and so on, yep. for your car. And this is a perfect example. Here we've got a, almost a completely custom rear end on a, on a 72 HQ Monaro. So Peter's got a, a live rear axle, um, but this body is actually significantly wider than standard. So he wanted to really maximize the, the amount of tire that we could get under the car. So with the wheel off the car, the critical measurements, and we make this really easy, Alan, we, we have a, a form, it's a one pager on the website that on the SHQRP. This image basically has the dimensions that we need and there's really only six critical measurements. So let's take a look. The, the first thing we're going to look at doing is, um, is measuring the backspace and that's measured from the wheel mounting face here on the, on the, on the hub to the, the rear section that's most likely to, to foul the wheel. So to create that measurement, we look at that and then just simply hold up the ruler 160 mil. So that's the first measurement we want to take and that's the distance from the backmost point of the body to the mounting face of the wheel. The other critical measurement is the front space. 255 millimetres. So those two critical measurements we put onto the form. The rest of the measurements we take relate to the brakes. Now if you deal with a great company like Harrop, we can supply all of those dimensions for the brakes to forge line directly and we don't have to take the actual measurements. But if this was another brake brand, chances are we'd have to go and take, take some measurements to actually explain how much caliper overhang there is and what the overall height of the caliper is relative to the, the centre line of the axle. So, so you, you don't want the actual caliper fouling the wheel. Exactly. So, and some, sometimes you really want to get the spokes of the wheel as far back towards the caliper as possible to create that deep dish and as we've seen on the HQ like Peter's got this brilliant deep dish wheel with a, a fantastic finish on the on the rim shell so it makes that real muscle car look stand out. We'd want to measure this distance on the outside here to see how much envelope we've got in terms of the actual wheel size and the easiest way to do that is with a straight edge and that's pretty much exactly 200 millimetres. The other critical element is this overhang of the caliper. So we want to have the caliper 
uh, as, you know, as close ideally to the, the spokes in Peter's case because he wanted to get that really deep dish look. And that's only 15 millimetres. So these, these Harrop brakes have got what we call a really shallow offset there. They're offset here with this disc adapter using the park drum on the inside. So Heath, what other measurements should we be looking at? Well, there's really only two other critical measurements. Uh, forge line wheels are all made hub centric, so we need to measure this hub diameter, and it's critical that we get that accurate, so we don't want to just use a basic ruler. Um, I've got the verniers out of the engineering office. So that's right on 70 millimetres, so we provide that information with the hub height because all of the wheels are supplied with a centre cap and obviously you want the centre cap to be able to fit over the, over the hub. And that's measuring 20 millimetres across, across there. So 70 by 20. Those, those, those critical six measurements enable Forge Line to, uh, I guess, build a wheel like Peter's got here, which is 19 by 13 inches. And you know, probably think, wow, that's a big wheel for a HQ. But with the brake package, the body modifications, and the suspension modifications, it's typical of what custom car builders are doing. And it all complements one another. And it, it, you know, it doesn't foul the bodywork. And, and fantastically, it's running a 335 rear tyre, so all the power that that supercharged V8 is going to get to the ground nicely. I hope so. <laughs> Having looked at the measurements and how we go about it, tell us what they've come up with. So here we have Peter's finished wheel. Um, Peter's got a fantastic colour combination that he's chosen, but let's firstly just look at the measurements. We, we went with a 19 inch uh, diameter and that enabled some of those uh, high performance tyres that you see on the European supercars to be used on the HQ. So we're using a 355 Pirelli and with the with the wide body and the brake positioning measurements that we've taken, Peter's actually got a seven inch outer front shell. So we get this incredibly sexy deep dish with a brushed aluminium clear coat and then a five inch inner half. So we call this the outer half when it's mounted on the car and then the inner half. So overall it's 13 inches, 19 inches in diameter. It uses the ZX3P center, which is a Forge 6061 T6 aluminum. So it's a, a premier style wheel. It's got what we we call a flat lip here on the outer and then it's got a reverse step lift on the inside. Awesome looking wheel, complements the car beautifully and, and I know Peter's you know, absolutely thrilled with the, uh, the finish. Heath, we've spoken about the back of the car, the rear of the car, now tell us the differences with the front. Certainly, well the principles are exactly the same but the measurements are obviously going to be different. Like at the front we've obviously got the wheel that needs to articulate the steering and, and most modern muscle cars and custom cars like the HQ run what we call a staggered setup. So it's a, it's a much wider rear tyre to get the power down and a narrower front tyre. So in, in Peter's case he's running a 355 in the back and a, a 255 in the front. So so we would take the measurements in exactly the same way, but we'd take particular attention to the way the wheel has to move to make sure that the inner wheel's not going to foul anywhere on the bodywork. But this wheel's a little bit narrower, still a 19 inch, but again, running the Pirelli tire, and we've managed to put our big 15 inch ultimate brake package underneath this 19 inch wheel. So it's uh, got all the stopping power that it needs to support the high horsepower motor. Um, obviously, you know, clearances on bodywork and, and, and all those sort of things have got to be taken into account when you're doing your outer diameter and that's exactly right and, and another obvious requirement and, and it's important to get just get it millimeter perfect so we uh, we take those basic measurements and then forge line have an algorithm and a program that will actually design the wheel for us and then we know that what we get once we bolt it on is is right to go and, and you're right clearances to front guards and rear guards we we make sure that's all accounted for well it certainly looks good there's no doubt about that yeah, well, this car is just a sensational example of what's possible with a, with Australian engineering and, and great companies supporting it like, like Harrop and, and the boys at Downtown Customs that have built the car.